Hello everyone, it's week four of the Mixed Media Techniques prompt in the Facebook group, the Mixed Media Emporium. And the challenge for this week is resist techniques. Um, we've tried this before, we did it last year with um, wax, but there are many, many different ways that you can do this and I want to try a couple of different ideas with you today. Um, to start off with, I'm going to do a technique called Joseph's Coat. I've got some distress inks here, any dye ink will work for this. I've got um, a few different colours as you can see and I'm just going to start off by putting um, a few colours down. Um, let me just get um, a piece of paper to protect my surface. Bear with me. Let's stop this getting um, all muddy and um, you know unappealing to your eye and all I'm going to do is use my mini blending tool here just to put down some blobs, um, literally blobs of colour just like this trying to not um, overthink it trying to you know be quite random about it um, next I'll come in with some peacock feathers so that color there was fe festive berries this is peacock feathers as I say any brand of um, distress inks of um, dye inks would work for this I'm overlapping the colours as well, as you can see. And this blending tool I'm using is by Joy um, Crafts. I ordered the, um, the, the the pads a couple of weeks ago and bought the wrong size. Um, I originally meant for this size here for my Tim Holtz Ranger um, tool because I couldn't get um, hold of any of these for a realistic price and didn't notice the measurements were completely different. So be warned, but I do actually really like this um, mini blending tool. It works really well. So if I can find it, I'll leave the link in the description box below. So next I'm going to come in with some um, seedless preserves. I've got my pads here at the, at the ready. So let's just do this. I say, just try not to overthink where you're putting it. Try and be random. I find being random quite difficult, as you know. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Um, and then I'm going to add some of the uh, crushed olive. Did I say I was using um, twisted citron? It's not, it's crushed crushed olive. So let's add some of this as well. I love this colour, it's beautiful. And we can come in again as well if we find that, um, you know, we need to add more colour just to balance things out. But just um, put some colour down. And at this stage, it's going to look really busy and absolutely awful. And I'm sure some of you will be thinking, my goodness me, Nina, what on earth are you doing? Trust me, I think this will be fabulous when we're when we're done. I do want to add a bit more of that blue just to fill this this space here let's just widen that blue area and we can have more color whilst we're at it here just to get some more more vibrancy and i will probably go over this um a couple of times off off camera and then we'll add a bit more of that red um as well the ink gets on your fingers but you can rub it off really easily with a pumice stone i find is the um, easiest thing to to use so there we go now we've got um, quite a busy colorful background i've gone over that a couple of times and finally blended everything together using the crushed olive that um, has a tendency to pull everything together really nicely um, and i'm just going to spray with some water we all know that um, distress oxides and um, react um, distress inks react with water um, so let's just leave that for a minute or two for it to do its thing and then I'm going to heat set this with my heat tool. Now I let the water sit for a minute or two and then um, I've dried it with my heat tool. Isn't that pretty? That's absolutely gorgeous. Now I'm going to use this stamp here and this is one of the Art by Marlene stamps um, from her signature collection. It's this one here. So I've got my stamping um, block here. Whoops, would help if I put it um, the right way round, wouldn't it? And I've got my embossing stamp pad as well. And I'm just going to apply um, a good layer of ink all over the top of my stamp stamp so just go over this really well you want a nice coating of ink and I always find it easier to take the embossing pad to the um, stamp rather than the other way around there we go that should um, that should do and then I'm just going to press this firmly on let me just see where I want it to go about there like that don't think about it too much and I'm going to hold this down for a few seconds just to make sure that that embossing ink grabs 
so we should be ready to take it off um, now and I've got some white embossing powder here so I'm just going to give that um, a good shake and pour this over the top and let's see what this looks like there we go nice bright um, image there tap off any excess and if you need to as well just use a small paintbrush just to get rid of any stray bits here we go like this and I'm just going to go off now and heat set this with my um, heat tool so we've got some stray bits just down down here that we need to get rid of as well and I'll tip all of the excess back into my jar I've heat set the white embossing powder now with my heat tool and that's what it looks like. And next I want to go over um, the other areas. Here we go with a Versamark pen. This is one of the Versamark marker pens. It's exactly the same as the embossing stamp pad, but just in pen form. And I'm going to fill in the whole of the area inside that stamped perimeter just like like this there are several different tools you can use to do this um, i've also got um, an embossing gloss um, wand here that i picked up for a pound in um, the craft fair a couple of years ago um, i've never used this let's try this as well same kind of um, thing um, this was on clearance and i thought mm, i'm sure it'll come in handy for, for something at some stage and you know for a pound what have you got to lose so let's go over the whole of this and you'll see why I'm doing this um, in a second. I've gone over that with my um, embossing wand and now I'm just going to apply, apply some clear embossing powder. So we'll just add this over the background here like like so and tip tip that off um, you can see I've missed um, a couple of bits I can go in and touch that up um, later but again I'm just going to um, heat set this with my heat tool now if I tilt this you'll be able to see that it's shiny within the center of the bird so we've got the white um, background that clearly defines it and then the center is really shiny what I want to do next is go over with some of my black soot distress oxide and you might be thinking oh my goodness me what are you doing trust me this will be gorgeous I'm just going to go right over the whole of the background with the black distress ink you don't have to use black if you wanted to use um you know a dark blue faded jeans of course you could do but this will be really dramatic um so i'm just going to go over the whole of the background until it's all covered let me just grab in fact this will do fine just a piece of tissue paper just to stop me getting um any mucky fingerprints um in there so here we go. Let me just show you what it um, looks like so far. There we go. I think I'm happy um, with that. I like the fact that you can still see um, some of the colours poking through underneath. That is cool. Love, love, love that. All I want to do now is come in with um, another piece of kitchen towel and I'm just going to rub over the white background just to get rid of any black that's um, appeared on the stamped image. Here we go and just brighten it up a bit and just how beautiful is that it's absolutely gorgeous now let me explain if all i've done is stamped with either clear embossing powder or just the white with this bird here um, then everything in the center would have filled in with black as well but because i've gone over it with the clear embossing um, powder of course it's acted as a resist and i just think that's absolutely wonderful now i will probably um, trim this down um, slightly um, we could even add some more water splatters let's just have a look and see what that would look like let's clean this up so let's add some more sprays because of course we know that the distress oxide reacts to water and oxidizes as well so let's see what we get and you can see that that's starting to um, react as well how beautiful so i'm going to leave that for a couple of seconds let's mop up some of the um, water and perhaps we might even go over it um, again for a second time let's see what we've got you see that's gorgeous that's really beautiful let's try it um, again now of course i've got a bit of warping but that's fine we can just um, weight it down underneath a heavy book and that will sort that out um, just fine now i've had this um, weighted down underneath a heavy book and you can see that all those um, wrinkles have gone now that's nice and flat i've just had this in between a piece of deli paper you could use parchment paper that would work um, in much the same way so let's try something else 
Now this time, let's try doing um, a background using Distress Oxide um, inks. I've got here Wilted Violet, Peeled Paint, Broken China and Peacock Feathers. Um, rather than doing circles, I am just going to randomly just apply, apply paint in sort of stripes like, like this. Just trying to be quite bold um, about it. Let's have some here like like this. We can all always add more paint um, if we want to, or more ink, I should um, I should say. Um, next, I'll come in with some um, peacock feathers. Let's add um, some of this. Like so. And then um, maybe some broken um, china. I'm just changing uh, my pads over as I need to. And go. And have I got room for um, some peeled paint? Let's um, let's just add some of that um, just here. There we go. I've decided to add some more of the peeled paint just um, here like this. There we go. I really like that. Those colours um, work really nicely together. And again, I'm just going to spritz because we know that Distress Oxides also reactivate and oxidise once we've added water. Isn't that gorgeous? And I'm just going to leave that be um, and then heat set that with my heat tool. That's had a really good dry and I like the effect, but I want to work on it a bit further and I'm going to use my um, craft mat. Um, what shall we um, add? Let's have a look. Let's add some of the wilted violet, peeled paint and broken, broken china. In fact, we'll go for the peacock feathers. Here we go. And let's just try and get a bit more detail. So I'm spraying this like like so just to activate those paints and I'm just going to tap on like this just to try and pick up some more um, colour and just make it um, really pretty. You can work on these as much as you want and as soon as I get something that I'm happy with I'm going to dry it with my heat tool. This is starting to take shape now. This time I'm going to add some of the picked raspberry spiced marmalade and um, some fossilised um, amber as well. There we go. Um, again, I'm just going to spritz that as well, just with a bit of water. And again, I'm going to add some of this to the top of my card. And you can see that I'm tapping it in as well, just trying not to ruin um, what I've already got, but just trying to introduce a bit more pattern and colour. It's just gorgeous. And again, I'll dry that as well. That, just gorgeous the colors are so pretty and I don't know whether you can see all of these splatters and speckles that um, I've added it's just lovely now with distress oxide because it's partly pigment ink I am going to go over this with my stamping buddy um, you need to make sure that nothing is going to um, stick if you can see any shiny bits it means it's not quite dry yet so go over it with your heat tool um, again um, just make sure that it really is bone dry um, now of course course I know that not everybody has one of um, these um, or these tools here if you've only got um, an embossing stamp pad you need to find a stamp with lots of flat bits this one here is absolutely perfect we've got lots of um, flat um, stamping um, areas and this will work really well without me having to um, apply any white embossing powder so I'm just going to make sure that um, I apply plenty of embossing ink all over this beautiful butterfly stamp and this one here is by um, indigo blue and I'm going to stamp onto my background to try and get it fairly um, central. I've allowed much more space um, than I need, a bigger card than I need, just so that um, I can trim it away as, uh, as necessary. So let's take this off. I've held it down for a minute or two again, just to make sure that that um, embossing ink grabs. Let's move um, everything out of the way. What have I done with my clear embossing powder? So this time I'm just going to go over with the clear. You can see the butterfly image in the background. Got a piece of plain paper here to catch all the excess so I can pour it back into the tub. Now you can see I've got some in areas where I don't want it. And again, as I did before, I'm just going to use a paintbrush just to brush all of those unwanted bits uh, away. 
just being careful as I go around the um, edge. Like this. It's fascinating watching it turn. Add the ink on top I'm just going to trim the edges and um, just because this background is much too big and I just want to save these beautiful colorful pieces here we go I've trimmed this down I'm going to keep these bits as well aren't they pretty so we can use those for collage in something else this time I'm going to use faded jeans instead of the black um, soot and again I'm just going to go all over the background in exactly the same way now you can see I'm just going over the background again in the black soot like this. I started off trying it with um, faded jeans and it didn't work at all. You could barely see um, the pattern of the butterfly. So I've reached for my black soot again. And I just need to grab um, a tissue paper again just to wipe the excess ink of the butterfly itself. Just where that ink accumulates, of course, the um, clear embossing powder acts as a resist. And just look how gorgeous that is. It's just absolutely beautiful. Really love that technique. And if you do one of these and you feel that it's a little bit dark, you can always go round the outside with a white pen. I've got um, a Posca paint pen here and a couple of um, gel pens. Let's try the um, Signo Uniball pen. I'm just going to go round the outside here with some scribbly lines. And I just think the key is just to keep it loose and scribbly like this. Just going with those uneven lines. That looks really pretty and freshens everything up. And I think you can go over with, you know, a couple of layers as well. Let me just show you on one side and then I'll go off screen and finish it off. But there you go, just just like this, just to, you know, brighten it a bit on the outside and just make it pop a little bit more. I think the gel pen has really freshened that up. Now, I've tried a couple more of these as well, just using lighter colours of Distress inks. Um, this one here I did with Peacock Feathers over the top. Love that. That's really pretty. Um, and this one again with the black. Um, but, you know, just a few unique um, ideas. Now, one word of advice, if you want to add the white lines, but you want want the speckled background as I did in this one here make sure you spray the cards before you add um, a gel pen because of course this is water reactive and it will just smudge if you add water to it and you'll ruin your card so if you want that speckled effect spray it first dry it and then go around the outside with your gel pen now you all know how much I love experimenting. I wanted to try it with some of my um, masterboard prints. Um, the bird here is printed out, this one here. I have um, lightened this slightly, hence the colour is slightly different. I wanted a slightly brighter blue, so I've enhanced it on my home printer. This is the masterboard background that I used to create this masterboard here. And then I've also printed um, out one of the orange ones. It's warped slightly as I've... Um, emboss the, the the white heat emboss the white but i can flatten that out later so that's that background there these have both been printed out on my inkjet printer at home and you can see that with this one here i've just used some um, thinnish masking tape to create a border around the outside so i'm now going to ink up with some black soot distress oxide on both of these and let's see what happens um when, when i've done that to these you can see i've gone over this one with the black ink i'm just going to heat set the masking tape before I peel it off just to soften the glue underneath which will um, mean that I'm less likely to tear the background underneath so I'm just going to peel all the masking tape um, off these look absolutely gorgeous I just love them absolutely beautiful now I want to seal these I'm going to use some of my distress glaze this is the Tim Holtz distress micro glaze because of course um, distress ink is um is not permanent so I'm just going to rub over the background like this I might give it a couple of coats let it dry in between in fact I might as well go over the whole of the background because of course I used my inkjet printer and so that's not permanent um, either so we'll just give that a nice coat and I'll do the same with this one here and once you've left your micro glaze for a few minutes or two you just want to buff just to take any streaks away and that should protect your card enough now you can see that mine is warping slightly from where I've applied the embossing 
um, powders. I'm just going to weight it down underneath a heavy book, just in between a piece of deli paper, and that will flatten flatten it out. Here are the results of my efforts. You all know how much I love um, experimenting. So today's session was no exception. Just had great fun making these. I just love how the White Signo um, pen has really helped to brighten this one up, which was just um, a little bit um, on the dark side. Aren't those fabulous? And I get asked the question all the time, what do you do with these? Um, well, they make absolutely wonderful card toppers. You know, you could mount these onto um, some coordinating papers or even fabrics they'd look wonderful you can sew around the edges um, I will probably put some of these in my journal I just think they'll make uh, you know wonderful embellishments for in my junk journals um, this one here I decided to mount onto another piece of uh, my masterboard background and again I'll probably use this in my journal but wouldn't this make the most wonderful slimline um, greetings card all it needs is some kind of um, sentiment and that's it job done just mount it onto a piece of you know card stock and that's it um this one here you can see i've cut down the border was just um a little bit um too wide so i've um narrowed it down slightly and again this is just perfect now for either having as a card topper or putting into my journal and of course this is the first one um, I did. Now I did do a couple of grungy style ones as well so this one here was done using the, stay, uh, the, the same flower stamp set from pa uh, Paper Artsy. I added a butterfly to this one here. I used ice spruce to go over the background and then I've given it um, a border with the black soot. Love that so for those of you that really like um, a grungy um, style then you know this might be for you. Um, I did do a similar background as I did for this one here using the distress oxides um, in the background you can see it um, shining through um, and then this one here I just used various um, uh, distress inks in various shades of blue and green and used the Tim Holtz um, stamp set this was from the um, Papillon stamp set so you know and again this is a, another really dense stamp set that really does lend itself um, to this kind of technique if you would like to participate in this week's challenge please do feel free to come along and join us in the facebook group the mixed media emporium i'll leave the link to the facebook group in the description box below please be aware that we are a prompt related group so anything that isn't prompt related does get deleted there are also four entry questions that you will need to answer otherwise your request to join will be automatically declined but we're a really fast-paced fun um challenging group as well so you know please do feel free to come and take a look but if you've enjoyed today's video as always i'd really appreciate a thumbs up as i always say it really does let youtube know that you like what i'm doing and of course do let me know what you think in the comments below let me know which one of these is your favorite and most importantly thanks for watching take care everyone and i'll see you all again soon bye for now